Hey, everybody. This is the Cincinnati Hero Podcast. I'm your co-host, John Reese, digital editor of the Cincinnati Herald, and we discuss news that you can't get anywhere else. On today's show, we will be discussing the inauguration of Joe Biden, which happened uh, this past Wednesday. And we're also going to get into some specific details about the event, too. Now, today, I have a co-host with me, and that is Andrea Carter, media consultant of the Cincinnati Herald. How are you doing today, Andrea? Fine. How are you, John? Thank you for having me. No problem at all. And also today, we have our intern for the Cincinnati Herald, Zoe Becker. How are you doing today, Zoe? I'm good. How are you? I am doing fantastic. First of all, and I think this is like one of the most interesting and fascinating things about the inauguration of Joe Biden is the appointment of Kamala Harris as she got sworn in as vice president. Now, obviously, this is kind of a big deal because Kamala Harris is the first female, first black, and first South Asian vice president in the history of the United States. Andrea, what are your thoughts on this? I think it's fantastic. Um, I know she has a, um, it is a step up for for women in leadership roles. It's a step up, especially for um, women in the sorority Alpha Kappa Alpha, which I am a member of. And in, in, in the Kamala, I think America's going to see the Kamala effect, where you'll see a renewed confidence in women who, who sees another level of the glass ceiling smashed um, in America. Because, um, I mean, growing up first, you know, I was always told you could always be president. And, you know, everyone thought it was a pipe dream until Barack Obama came along. And so now, you know, little girls were like, always told, well, you, you could do what a Barack Obama did, but there's... We've never really been an example for black little girls of reaching, breaking that glass ceiling. And the fact that she is not only elected, but has now been sworn in as Madam Vice President. I mean, it is a huge confidence builder. Yes, definitely. Zoe, what are your thoughts on Kamala Harris and the accomplishments she uh, made on Wednesday? I completely agree with Andrea. I think it's absolutely fantastic that um, little girls can look up to a woman, a black woman in the White House. Um, I think that it is definitely really necessary to have female representation in the White House. Um, I think that it's great that she's um, a little bit younger than we're used to. Um, I think that it's going to be very interesting over the next four years and um, after the after these four years um, to see what is going to happen and I think that it's just a great example for little girls to look up to. Yes, yes, definitely. And I also want to talk about Joe Biden and how he is definitely <laughs> a breath of fresh air compared to our um, previous president who was not at the inauguration. Uh, what are your thoughts on Joe Biden um, just so far? It's like, do you think he's going to keep his promises and, you know, make America united again? What are your thoughts, Andrea? Um, I think he's trying. I, I think there's a lot of cleanup that work that he's going to have to do to right the country. Uh, but I think he's also, through who he has hired, who's in his cabinet, I think he is going to keep the promise of making sure America is represented in not only in his administration, but also hopefully address not all, but maybe a few of the issues that people have that need addressing. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to hold him to, to everything because that's just not possible or logical. But I think you know, if he can address crime and social justice issues and see some sort of reform, that will go a long way of people feeling better about America and what can be accomplished. Zoe, what are your thoughts on Joe Biden? I think it's a relief that we have him in office. I think the biggest difference between his administration and Trump's administration is going to be the transparency of the Biden administration. Um, it's already been a lot clearer than Trump's. Um, so 
I think that most people are feeling relieved, um, kind of like a weight off our shoulders. Um, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next four years and it's definitely going to be a big adjustment. I feel like it's, um, it's hard for us to trust the White House and to like, it's going to be different having a transparent White House and um, yeah, it's going to take a lot getting used to, but I'm excited for it. Yes, definitely. As am I. Now, one more thing I wanted to talk about um, that happened during the inauguration. Um, there was also, there's even more history made on, you know, Wednesday. Amanda Gorman was the youngest poet to read at a presidential inauguration. Andrea, what are your thoughts on Amanda Gore, uh, Gorman and her making history like that? Um, I've heard her... Um... I've heard her poem twice now, and I'm probably going to play it again. And I thought she summed up perfectly what has occurred in the past, what is occurring in the present, and the hope for the future. And I, I think um, everyone has found it inspirational. I think she's a very insightful young woman who is going to go far in the liter literary world um, because of that insight. It was outstanding. Yes, yes, it was. Zoe, what are your thoughts on Amanda Gorman? It was amazing. I mean, I don't know anyone who didn't cry while listening to that poem. And I agree with Andrea. I'm going to listen to it again. I really can't get enough of it. Um, I think it was amazing to see a young person there. I mean, it's really inspiring. Um, I definitely agree that her poem was like perfect. It definitely uh, fit the mood. It summed up everything that we needed to hear. And um, I think it's great. I loved it. I really can't wait to hear more from her. And I definitely agree she's going to go very far. I, I think what's really interesting is the fact that how she got discovered by the Biden administration, Jill Biden heard her at a reading and loved what she was saying during this reading and recommended her to the transition committee that you might want to use her. And that's how this came to be. So, you know, you never, I think it's a good idea for everybody. You never know who you're listening to and how it can um, inspire and what that person might do as um, a good example of what can get done by listening to young people. Yes, yes, indeed. And finally, I also want to talk about what Joe Biden did on his first day. I mean, right after the inauguration and everything, he went to the Oval Office and he started signing executive orders. One of them included ending the discriminatory ban on entry to the United States. And unfortunately, that implied predominantly Muslim countries, because as we all know, Trump kicked off his presidency by signing that hastily put together executive order, you know, basically called it a Muslim ban. Also, Joe Biden signed an executive order to preserve DACA, which stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, and this Obama era program shielded undocumented immigrants who came to the U.S. as children from deportation, and that has been in limbo ever since President Trump had headed to office. Joe Biden also rejoined the Paris Climate Agreement. Joe Biden also uh, let the United States remain in the World Health Organization. And finally, Joe Biden also signed a federal mask mandate. And basically, you have to mask up or you won't be allowed to board a plane, train, or bus. So, Andrea, I want to ask you, out of all of these, uh, out of all these executive orders, which one did you find the most um, significant? And also, what, what else do you hope um, for President Biden to do in the uh, near future? I think the most significant thing was that he showed leadership from day one. Um, he, sh he showed through those executive orders, he cared about our immigrants, he cares about people in America, but at the same time, he also is caring about COVID and letting everyone know, we're going to, you're, you, you have to comply with the mask um, for everything. I mean. Uh, he's been talking about it ever since he was elected, what we need to do, it's common sense. Um, and I think it's, I know there was a sense of calm when he, you know, became president. 
everyone, there was this huge sigh of relief. And I think with his actions, it, there's an, it, basically his, with his actions, he said, this is a new day in America. And either you're going to get on board on this train and respect everybody and be nice to everybody, or you know what, I'm not going to tolerate it. And I think that's what his actions showed. Right, definitely. Zoe, uh, your thoughts? Um, Biden has a lot of work to do to reverse the destructive impacts of Trump's presidency. And he, I agree, he showed amazing precedent on day one in, um, in putting out all these executive orders. There's also a lot of like little things he's done. The White House has changed. Um, there's a list of preferred pronouns you can put in instead of just male or female. Um, just things like that is just really showing a, it is a new day. I think that it's great that he's putting science first. I mean, that coronavirus is definitely something that Americans have, I mean, with Trump, like we were worried if we would never get out of it. And I think that um, it's really great to see what Biden's already doing. Um, and I think that he is setting really good precedent for the years ahead. I mean, even day two was a good precedent because he did more on the COVID and had Fauci do a press conference. And he let the experts speak on this. It's not a fluke. It's not fake. It's not something somebody dreamed up. It actually is a medical situation that we all need to take seriously and not be browbeated about it and just say it's fake news. It's not fake. People are dying. Um, I think the fact that people watching the ceremony we honoring those who died from COVID, I think was very moving, but also very cathartic um, because no one has stopped to recognize the sac, I won't say a sacrifice, but people who have died due to, to a medical issue that is affecting the world. And we did not have the leadership that was taking it seriously, only looking at how the best way for the outcome to benefit that person than the whole world, than the whole country. Um, it's a breath of, that really it's a breath of fresh air. Um, and it's gonna be interesting to see what he gets done in, the, in his first hundred days and hear his State of the Union speech. It's gonna be very, very interesting. Definitely, definitely. Well, that's about it for this discussion. I want to thank Andrea and I wanna thank Zoe for being on this podcast. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. And I also want to remind our listeners to uh, check out all of our stories online at our website, the Cincinnati And remember to also follow us on Facebook at the Cincinnati Herald. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Just do at Cincy Herald. And you can also follow us on YouTube. Just search the Herald TV. And also remember that we do an influencer show, which is basically just letting young people share their voices and speak out. We're also doing that on Saturday. So make sure to join Facebook Live at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. to check out our influencer shows. And that's basically it. I'm John Reese, digital editor of the Cincinnati Herald. And this has been another installment of the Cincinnati Herald podcast. Good night, everyone.